I promise this isn't the start of a cliche horror short story, but we're currently surrounded by robots. They range in complexity from toys to autonomous vehicles. Robots are playing a more and more important role in our lives. They've even replaced people's jobs. But what's the difference between something as simple as a calculator to something as complex as an autonomous vehicle? One can completely take you from place to place without you paying attention to the road, and the other makes you laugh when you type in 5318008 on it and turn it upside down. <laughs> I can't be the only one! Hi, I'm Mahmood. I'm a self-driving car engineer, and something that strikes a lot of people about autonomous vehicles or self-driving cars is how they work. I mean, how do they really work? How do we go from sensing something with like a camera all the way to making decisions and then executing them while driving out on the road. A lot of people who have a car in the modern world have something like cruise control on it, but we don't tend to think of that car as a robot because cruise control is just a function. You turn it on and you can take your feet off the pedals, but for the most part, you're still making a lot of the decisions. It's a pretty naive function. But as we introduce more function to a vehicle and move it up from level 1 to level 3, 4 or 5, the vehicle starts to turn into a robot. And no, I don't mean like Optimus Prime, I mean like the definition of a robot. But what is a robot? Now that's a question that's going to cause a lot of debate. The actual definition of a robot differs from person to person. Uh, feel free to leave a comment below with what your definition of a robot is. To me, a robot is a system which is able to interact with the physical world around it and is able to do these four functions. And these functions are sensing, perception, planning, and acting. Every robot does this. Doctors can't believe it. Now if we set up a scale that goes from definitely not a robot to definitely a robot, definitely a robot would be something like Asimo. I don't think anyone can look at footage of Asimo and say that this is not a robot. On the other hand, we can have something like a Glockenspiel. It's a metallic xylophone. Definitely not a robot. And somewhere in between these two is the grey area where things like a vending machine would sit. Is a vending machine a robot? I feel like that's like the blue and black versus the gold and white dress, but for people interested in tech, is a vending machine a robot? As an example, we'll use obstacle avoidance for an autonomous vehicle. If a vehicle is traveling down a road, it needs to be able to sense if there's an object, such as a person, in front of it, so that it doesn't end up running this person over. It's a pretty important function. The first step in this control flow is the sensor. This is where we take a physical phenomena in the real world and we turn it into an electronic signal. So if we're trying to detect a person in front of us on the road, we can use a camera to see that person, we can use a radar to bounce radio waves off that person, or we can use a lidar to get depth information about certain points that are around us. I'm sorry I brought up the lidar, it's just a really good example. He's not a big fan of lidars. The sensor then passes off the information that it has to a perception module in the form of an image, a sound file, or a 3D point cloud. The perception step's job is to take the information that we got in the sensing step and process that into an understanding that the computer can then make decisions on. So in our obstacle avoidance example, we can take the 3D point cloud from the LiDAR in the sensing step and process that into an understanding of how close an obstacle is in front of the vehicle. The next control step is the decision part. So if a vehicle is driving forward, and it perceives that an obstacle is in its way, the vehicle may decide to change its course so that it goes around the obstacle, or it can decide to stop entirely. In this step, the robot is deciding what to do based on the circumstances that it finds itself in. This is where the logic or the brains of the robot mostly sit. Here you can program what's important to a robot and how you want it to act in specific situations. Remember, the first two steps were about reading and understanding the world that are around it. In this step, the robot is deciding how it will exert its will upon the world. Just imagine I said that, but not in a way that makes it sound like robots are evil. After the robot has decided what it wants to do, it needs to act on it. And that's where this step comes in. Now the act step takes the output of the decision module, which can be seen as the will of the robot, and turns that into actuator outputs, such as controlling the motor or the brakes. So if the vehicle previously decided to brake for the pedestrians that are in front of it, 
it would send a break command to the break controller, which would understand how to take that command and turn it into an electric signal to the motor, which then breaks the vehicle. Now it might seem really complicated to break up everything that a robot does into these individual steps. I mean, why can't we write a single program that can do everything? Apart from being a really good way to organize the control flow, it can really help with increasing the adaptability of the system. For example, one of our sensors might be a LiDAR, which gives us depth information about the world around us using a point cloud. We can use that information to perceive obstacles in front of us, but we can pass off that same 3D point cloud to a particle filter, which is able to localize where we are in the world by using the points that it can see around the vehicle and recognizing where that is in a pre-mapped area. Google's Waymo, for example, uses LiDAR for localization. Tesla, on the other hand, prefer to use just the GPS. Humans also behave in the sense, perceive, decide, act way. For example, you're currently using your eyes and ears to watch this YouTube video. You may perceive it as a really good YouTube video and decide to subscribe. So you use your hand to move the mouse and click the subscribe button. Almost 90% of all viewers aren't subscribed. So if this video has given you any sort of value, please consider subscribing, it really helps out. And that's how a robot is able to perform a series of very complex tasks. It's engineering at its core. We take a very big complex problem and we break it down into smaller problems that are much easier to solve. And by the end of it, you've got a robot.